throughout time, people across the world told each other tales of how they came to be. Of heroes and monsters, romance and tragedy, death and rebirth. Mythology helped shape the ancient world explaining the unexplainable. This is Mythology Unleashed. Demeter, the goddess of agriculture, the harvest, fertility, and all things that grow on the earth, was seen as among the more benevolent of the gods. Though she did not have the fiery disposition that Hera and many other goddesses were known for, she would go to extreme lengths for her daughter, Persephone. Born of a union between Demeter and Zeus, Persephone was the goddess of springtime growth and flowers. She spent her days frolicking in wild meadows, dancing with the nymphs and basking in the warmth of the sun. Her infectious laughter could light the darkest of nights, and everyone who looked upon Persephone felt boundless joy and happiness. This beautiful dancing goddess would eventually catch the eye of one known for being far more somber and grim, and he peered up at her from below the earth. The dark and reclusive god of the dead, Hades, had his eyes keenly fixed on the lovely Persephone. His heart pounded at the sight of her radiant beauty and joyful disposition. He knew in his heart he had to have her. One morning, the sun shone brightly down upon a flower-filled meadow where Persephone danced merrily. Hades made his move. Suddenly, the ground shook, and an immense fissure opened mere steps away from the startled Persephone. She saw the handsome, grim god peering up at her. Hades reached his hand out toward Persephone, and in an instant, she was whisked away into the realm of Hades. The fissure was sealed, and Hades covered all traces of his presence, as if he had never been there. Though Hades did not mistreat Persephone during her tenure in his realm, she did feel an emptiness deep inside. She missed the sunlight, she missed the flowers of the meadow, she missed her nymph friends with whom she danced and she missed her beloved mother. Demeter went to the meadow to find her daughter, but there was no sign of her. Demeter looked high and low, tirelessly searching the realms of mankind and the gods, but to no avail. She was so intently focused on finding her daughter that the once dutiful goddess of nature and all things that grow neglected her duties and plunged the world into a deep freeze. Every plant, crop, and flower was killed by the frost, and the people and animals of the world would soon follow. Concerned that this endless winter would destroy the world, Zeus called Demeter before him. She explained to him Persephone's disappearance and her tireless yet fruitless search for her. Zeus called to the other gods and goddesses and questioned them if any had seen Persephone and what had happened to her. Helios, the god of the sun who sees all that happens upon the earth, told them he had seen Persephone absconded into the underworld by Hades himself. Hecate, the goddess of magic who resides in the realm of Hades, confirmed his story that Hades had taken Persephone as his wife. Demeter seethed with unrelenting fury how her estranged brother could just kidnap her daughter, and these other gods would simply let it happen. Zeus was left no choice, and he sent Hermes, the swift-footed messenger of Olympus, to fetch Persephone from the land of the dead. Mother and daughter were reunited and embraced tighter than any mortal could imagine. 
Zeus was urged and obligated to annul the marriage of Hades and Persephone and let Demeter and her daughter remain together. But there was one thing that he had to make sure of first. Persephone, have you consumed any food during your stay in the underworld? Nothing, save six pomegranate seeds. The gods were in a bind. To have eaten the food of the land of the dead would mean that Persephone would be eternally bound to Hades. But to unleash Demeter's full fury would lead to the end of the mortal world. So Zeus declared a compromise. For the first six months of the year, Persephone would remain with her mother on Olympus, while the remaining six months would be spent with Hades in the underworld. And so the bargain was struck, and the cycle would commence. For as long as Persephone would be with Demeter, the world would grow warmer and sunnier, with plants, flowers, and crops all growing in abundance. But when the time would come for Persephone to live with Hades, the world would gradually become colder, growing things would wither and die. Flowers would follow their mistress into the underworld, and winter would fall upon the earth. Thus began what we know as the seasons, spring, summer, fall, and winter. Persephone would continue her role as both a goddess of the springtime and as the queen of the dead. In many stories, she often acts as the ice to her husband's fire, granting him a tenderness and compassion that Hades rarely shows towards others and rarely receives. When Hercules visited the underworld amidst his labors, it was Persephone who convinced Hades to grant him an audience. When Orpheus traversed into the realm of Hades, it was Persephone, swayed by both the musician's dulcet tones and love for Eurydice, who swayed Hades to allow him the chance to rescue his true love. She could even calm the ever-snarling Cerberus into a peaceful lull. Wherever she resided, be it in the underworld with her husband or upon the surface with her mother, Persephone would bring with her an air of warmth and happiness, touching all within her presence.